started. Okay, Bozo 380 with the white pieces plays E4. Well, let's try the French defense. I haven't played that in quite a while. See what he does. So I play d5 after e6. Um, that's the idea. Just build up to this d5 with the French defense. And this is a kind of advanced variation, except uh, he hasn't played d4, which is normal. So this pawn will become weak unless he plays f4. Check. And if he plays f4, that will uh, open up some holes on his king side. So I don't think this is the best way for white to play. And I'm not, I'm not especially worried about this exchange here if he gives up his light squared bishop for my knight. This will be okay. He can take back with the queen because of the pin, but I will, I will unpin. And uh, now he needs to take, I think. So I win the bishop pair. What else could he do? Oh, he could move the queen. That would be kind of a loss of tempo. If he wants to keep the queen there, he should take. And now what's happening? You know, I can develop this other knight and continue to harass the queen with knight to uh, knight to f5 or knight to c6 if the bishop moves. This is not a great piece here, of course, looking at its own pawn, but the queen can be chased away. The pawn can move forward or the bishop can be relocated. So I can, uh, let's kick the bishop first. You know, I had a game very similar to this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where uh, I played knight to uh, f5 here. It's kind of a fork between the bishop and the queen. So he decides to take, but either way I get the bishop here. And he has two knights, so uh, should be good, but there's still a game to be played. Let's see. Uh, he can come in here. I can take it. I'm wondering about the move um, b6 and bishop to c5, chasing the queen away. In fact, the queen doesn't seem to have a lot of moves here. He can run away to this side of the board, I guess. E pawn, maybe it'll become weak at some point, but it's uh, defended by a knight and a queen, and I'm not attacking it as yet, so not a big deal. Just have to be careful these knights don't get in too close to my position here. Now this move is interesting. It, it took uh, some squares away from the queen, so now after bishop to c5, the queen only has f f4, or it could retreat. Let's see where it goes. The, my queen defends f7 here, so I'm not worried about queen f4. <clears throat> Maybe I should castle queenside and get quick, quick quick pressure on the d-file. Push the d-pawn forward. I could push the d-pawn forward anyway. It's supported there. <clears throat> I'm not sure I want to cancel a kingside with his uh, pawn advance here. See, his knight is loose. Can I take advantage of that? No, it's not loose, is it? It's uh, supported by the queen. But still, maybe queen to... Uh, hmm, no, I can't play queen to f6. I would have to play pawn to f6. Oh, this is a mistake. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I played this move. He could have just played um, b5 there. B4, and my bishop is kind of trapped. 
before I guess I would play pawn up maybe maybe just lose a pawn instead of a piece or take he didn't do that though he's just pushing his pawns over here let's <clears throat> let's stop this b5 idea the queen blocked the retreat of the bishop is a problem in this this pawn on uh, e5 it, it is annoying to have a pawn this close to your position that takes away squares you might normally have to retreat your pieces to okay so here I was planning to take it's funny if he takes back with the knight I could even consider queen takes knight because pawn takes rook takes rook check king has to move and I get the rook in the corner so I'd be giving up my queen for two rooks and a knight which should be good in general but uh, I have to be careful if he gets active with his queen or if there's some immediate tactic I may be in trouble but he's down to just a queen and a knight at that point ah okay so he doesn't play that probably wise not to play that way so let's uh, <clears throat> let's chase his knight away the queen is covering these squares so his knight can't come to g5 could go to h4 but then I could play my queen to g5 and get get active on this side of the board preventing him from castling okay he's hitting my bishop And he's looking at these squares. Maybe I should just take it. <laughs> One of the advantages of having the bishop pair is you can always trade your bishop for a knight. <laughs> and uh, you can do it at a time when it's good. Of advantage to you. Now this pawn on um, b6 is hanging. bring the queen back here to defend and also to start pressuring this pawn if the queen grabs my g pawn I can take the e pawn with check and defend g7 I don't know this position is getting a bit complicated I probably had better better ways to play it Maybe just king e7 and pawn to f6 is a way to play this. He's going to round up the pawn that way and leave me with the h pawn. I still have this idea of rook to, uh, <laughs> rook to h1 check picking up the rook in the corner. Okay, so he castled finally. Now he can actually uh, take. He can take here if I grab here. I wonder what what's the best thing here. I could take this pawn with the rook and then after he takes on um, after he takes on g5 there I could play f if he takes on g4 I could play f6 defending my rook and the queen's protecting over here and the king could go to that square I guess that's going to be okay And I'll move my rook up to one of these squares, either um, e7 or f7. Okay, he's piling up on that. So I guess I need to do something like that to relieve the pressure. Uh, I was thinking I had the queen here checked to pick up that rook, but I don't have that. I just don't have it. Okay, so castle queenside. 
getting the heck out of Dodge, I guess. So if we count the pawns, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So all, I, all I've gained is a pawn here. Otherwise, it's an even position. And he gets the pawn back even. Okay. Four against four. So I definitely had something better. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll look at it in the postmortem and see where I went wrong. But uh, definitely could have done better than that. So here, uh, I guess I don't have rook g1. Maybe rook g7. Maybe rook h7 to uh, h1 is an idea still. Mm, I could... Um, Kick the queen, I guess. This pawn is protected. The queen's got to move. Maybe it'll help make my um, bishop a better piece. And now I could play pawn to here. This kind of kicks the knight. <clears throat> Definitely kicks the knight, and the knight only has... And I see it can't go to these squares. It could go here. So rook to uh, f7 now is a threat to take. No, maybe it's a threat to go to f4, forking these pieces. But he always has, uh, he has rook to uh, g7 skewering my queen and king. <laughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, bishop here instead of there. Bishop here hits the pawn on c2 and threatens checkmate. So let's see how he responds to that. Oh, he moved. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, defended with the queen. If I play e3, he cannot take with the queen, he can't take with the pawn. It's kind of a fork. d3. Just puts more pressure on c2. Queen can't take because the rook defends, and the pawn can't take because it's pinned. Check. Okay, so he can try and sacrifice material here. Check. Yeah, that worked. He, well, he gave up a piece, but he's um, gotten something here, hasn't he? Maybe he can go for a perpetual or something like that. Okay, and then he plays uh, this move. But this check. is uh, this has got to be losing too, right? Because I'm going to queen with check. White resigns. Okay, uh, good game. Incoming I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.